And then also during that press conference, law enforcement announced key details that we have been waiting for with some major updates regarding their investigation into the shooter, Anthony McCray. First, the search for the suspect. With dozens of responding officers from local and statewide agencies, why was he able to seemingly just walk off campus? Well, they said there are thousands of cameras at the university, so it took a while to figure out the exact path McCray took, what buildings he might have entered, and which doors he left through. Due to the number of reports that we were receiving on campus, um, we, we actually at the time thought that he was still on campus. I mean, we had no indication at the time that he left campus. Um, we were receiving and responding to so many calls about potential shots fired or sightings of this person um, on campus. Although we deployed resources off campus, we, we didn't receive any calls. The initial reports of shots fired came in at 8.18 p.m. Exactly three hours later, police were finally able to release two photos of the suspect from that surveillance footage. 17 minutes after that, they got a call from a citizen who helped them locate McCray off campus. Which brings us to the next thing we learned, the confrontation with police. Two officers with Lansing PD made contact with McCray at Lake Lansing Road and Larch Street, which is 3.8 miles off of campus and just around the corner from where he lived with his father on East Howe Avenue. Police saying today it looked like he was just walking home. Both officers exited their vehicle. They ordered McCray to show his hands. Investigators say McCray took out a gun, didn't say anything to officers before taking his own life. And that's when officers were able to search his body. Here's what they found. Two 9mm handguns, the one he used on himself and another in his backpack. He had a fully loaded magazine in his jacket pocket with eight more loaded magazines in his backpack, along with a pencil-sized pouch filled with 50 rounds of loose ammo and two empty magazines. And in his wallet, two pages of notes that gave an indication of a possible motive, nothing police can confirm quite yet, but we are told it listed and threatened local businesses, a church, and a school district in New Jersey. Through our investigation, we found that he had had contact with some of those places. Um, I, he was an employee of the Meyer Warehouse at one time. Uh, and a couple of the other businesses, it appears that he'd had some issues with the employees there where he was asked to leave. Um, so it looks like he possibly a motive for that was he just felt slighted. And that's kind of what the note indicated. Also in that note, McCray claimed to be the leader of a group of 20 killers. But police said they quickly invalidated that claim after speaking with McCray's father. We brought that up to him, and he had mentioned that his son does not have any friends. He pretty much sat in his room most of the time. He ate, um, went to the bathroom in there. So he, he pretty much never left his room, and his father didn't believe that he had any friends, let alone 20 of them, that would, would help him put this out. So we kind of determined that he was the lone shooter. Police said they're also aware of a rumor that uh, McRae was turned away from a job at Michigan State University at some time. They could not confirm that information, but they said it is something they are looking into. And then police also outlined McRae's call history. A larceny complaint in 2005, three traffic violations, one in 2006, two in 07. And in 2019, he was arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. A felony charge originally, but the prosecutor decided to drop that to a misdemeanor, which allowed him to legally purchase the guns that he had on him on Monday, although neither of them were registered.